12 p.m. 12 a.m. Yeah, it should have been 1159. Uh, one minute earlier than what it says. Okay, so it's Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I'll, I'll check this, Sujan. Probably I'll make it up to the class time on Thursday. So if, if you need until before the class time on Thursday, I'll see you. Apache there? Oh, you should, it's the best. 
You should. You should like right? that. <laughs> so, Kevin, you didn't use Apache. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's open source. I'll be giving you some instructions of how to install it and how it has to be used. Uh, and then uh, it can be put up on Linux, Windows, or Mac, where IAS is uh, Internet Information Service. It's from Microsoft, and that can be only used on Windows. Uh, these are the other two, uh, you know, like you used 5%, and the other one is around 6%. So that, that is just for high performance uh, web servers. Uh, anything else here? I don't think so. Okay. Let's, uh, I'll be just talking about Apache from nothing else. It was, this was just some history about web servers. Uh, okay, who knows SQL? Okay. That's for databases. Let me skip this, I'll come back to this later. So, what did, uh, another question, what did you do on your HTML assignment? You had an assignment about HTML and CSS, so what did you do in that HTML assignment? I, I, I would appreciate it if it is an interactive class so that uh, I get to know how much I have learned about it and I get to know how much you guys know about it. <laughs> All right, good. So you open that on a web browser, you showed up something, CSS, HTML. So now, uh, what did you do? What was the URL you mentioned on the web browser? Just double click the uh, file and it open for you. Slash slash. Okay, file something slash slash. Okay, cool. So, uh, <coughs> normally in the internet, like, uh, I just put up. Uh, okay, let me, let me use this. <laughs> okay. Normally in internet you have a browser and you have the link, you type a link, actually the link will consist of the host and then the file which you are actually asking for from the host. For example, the right? So wikipedia.org is the host and you are asking for slash wiki slash web server in that particular server. Well, let, us, let, us, let us consider two machines. Uh, this might be the Wikipedia host, and I'm asking for this, and this will connect to nen.wikipedia.org, which is this, and then in that, in the file system, you will have slash wiki slash web server. Sorry, yeah, slash wiki slash web server. That is the file it is actually delivering to me if you look at this. Everyone understood? Now, okay. Now, uh, the particular page which I showed had static content, right? So it had some content. I'm asking for that content. It is delivering me back. <coughs> so now, let us get the difference between static and dynamic. Why do you think we need dynamic web pages? That, that's, a, that's a pretty good example. Uh, any website examples? Yes. Perfect. Like if you had a, uh, you were looking at uh, what page that was referencing database information that was changing. Uh, that, that, that's okay. Like the US website that shows you how much debt you was in, all this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Uh, <laughs> okay, the database, uh, fine. So now, uh, how many people are on social media? Cool. So, you know, this is my webpage. I just blurred it because you guys don't get to know who I am. <laughs> so, uh, you know that there are print notifications on the right, so that keeps on changing as and when your friends like something or comment, uh, comment about it, and you have these updates which keeps on changing as and when people post something. So uh, 
how does the web, uh, web browser, because you're just working on a web browser, right? But you're contacting Facebook. So that's that's another computer on the other, that's another server on the other side. So how does the web browser get to know something is changing? That is what we'll be looking at today. Okay, so not in detail so that you can actually develop a Facebook page, but uh, just some basics about it. Another example, he, I don't know the name, but he made a very good statement about database. So when we, when we talk about dynamic web pages, we also think about how you're actually changing a database or how, how you're actually uh, uh, inserting or selecting something <coughs> from a particular database of another server. Again, I asked SQL, who knows databases? Who, who has an overview of databases? Okay, there are some who do not know it, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> so, for example, I'm sure a lot of people have used Amazon, you know, just tried to log into it, and uh, so you put up your name. This is actually called HTML forms. Another question, how many of you know HTML? Okay, um, okay, I just go through it in a way. So this is an HTML form. You put up your name, email address, etc., and then you actually submit it to a create account, and the data here will be passed to the server. Server stores it somewhere. So that the next time you log in with the same email address, you'll get an error, right? So that's uh, dynamic web pages. What you do, you send a request, the web server will actually call a script or any kind of, uh, there might be a programming language where you can actually talk to, uh, and that will contact the database if necessary, and <coughs> it will send you a response. So, does everyone get the difference between the web server, how it started, to that of the dynamic web server? Uh, Dynamic web pages. Well, basically, web server can start something just take the information and go directly through that to whatever resource is looking for. You need to be a bit louder. Sorry. I understand this. Uh, database basically basically starts with a web browser, which is which is what you're interacting with, which then it translates into a script or language of some kind, which then contacts the database, which then responds back, translating back to the script again to report back to you. Okay, let me explain again. This is optional. Database is optional, right? So it might be something like something is changing on the web server and you want to get to know what is changing. We give an example of topics, right? So the basic difference is that you had static web pages before. You just go into a particular location, pick up that web page, you tell, okay, this is the this is the thing which you are requesting for. Now things are changing and people are moving on to real time and other things, so everything is changing very quickly. So if you want to get to know that on the web browser, you have dynamic web pages for So again, as I mentioned, right? So you have this Amazon web forms, you have put up your data there, you have created an account, and the next thing is uh, if you have created an account and you do the same thing with the same email address again, it will show you that uh, there is a problem, that you have already created that account. How will your web browser get to know that? So it has to actually contact the server and get some information from the server and then tell you what the problem is. Right? So. These are these are one of these are few uh, uh, motivations to actually get onto dynamic web pages. Okay. So now I told what's the form. I have been told, but this is the kind of uh, look you actually get when you use HTML forms. character. Okay, so what does HTML forms do? It helps in passing data to the server, 
as I mentioned, the Amazon has its email address and you're putting up your name and other things. So it will actually send that data to the server. And it might also be a checkbox or a radio button and a submit button. The submit button looks something like create account button on Amazon. Okay. And uh, for uh, I, I'll be just giving you a very brief overview of HTML form so that you can go further and see how dynamic web pages work. It's uh, it's better you you can go to this website and look at uh, look in more detail how HTML forms work. Okay. And uh, this, uh, inside the body, you have the form. I am assuming that you have enough uh, knowledge about HTML, and I'm actually going into, this is just a tag, right? Form, and it, it has a closing tag. <coughs> For that, you have an action where you actually call a script. So you call a script, again, dynamic web pages where you have a script, or where you have something running, where you can call a program and tell that, okay, once I, you have submitted this particular form, you just call this script at the particular URL. And uh, with the method post, I'll, I'll, I'll come to what the methods mean later, but it is just an overview of how form works. You have the form inside the body where you have an action. Action, so action gives the uh, location of the script or the program you are calling that once you submit this form. So, HTTP, HTTP methods, how many of you know something about it? Okay, so HTTP is a protocol, as I, uh, the URL where you send, you can actually, uh, I think mean, there are five methods. I'll be just talking about get and post. So once this form, I'm using post here. And what does these two methods do? When you have the form, when you have some details in the form, uh, you can actually call these two methods on the server. So as I mentioned, the servers will have uh, some program running. So for the server to get to know what it has to do, you have to call a method saying that Java, right? If we, I'm just giving an example of Java. Java will have a get method there, and you actually call that method saying that at this particular location, I want to call this method with these details. It might be get or post. So these are the two HTTP methods which can be used for dynamic web pages when you're using forms and any other things which you want in terms of dynamically getting data from the server. I'll, I'll, I'll give you hands on on how this is done so, so you'll have a more clear picture of what it is. So the difference between these two is when uh, when, when they actually started uh, the protocol and when they thought about dynamic web pages, why, why they came up with get and post. So let us talk about databases or inserting and getting data from a particular location. Right, so uh, because we spoke about forms, and forms does those things. You either get data or you actually insert data. Uh, just by the names of it, anyone can guess why uh, these two were, why people came up with these two names? Get and post. Let's, let's come to database, right? So when you are getting, you are getting information from the database. When you are posting, you are actually posting. The, right? You are trying to change some content there. So that is the main reason why people came up with these two games. You know? when, you, when you get data, you ask the database something, you ask the server, get me some data. These are the parameters I'm sending it to you based on these parameters, so get me some data. When you are posting, these are the parameters I'm sending it to you, change the state of it. So, the basic difference is get, uh, you use get. You can use both the methods, do the same functionality. Okay, but in theory, the difference is when you are using get, you need to make sure that you are, uh, you, uh, you need to make sure that you are not changing the state of the server. 
Like you're not inserting anything, you're not changing anything in the database, or you're not changing anything in the server. But whereas when you use POST, POST is actually used to change the state of the server. So it might be the database, or it might be any variables in, in the server. So that's the main reason, as I mentioned, right? No changes are done except on the user screen. I'll show you how it's done. Because yes. So another difference is the difference between get and post is when you use the get method, the URL changes. So uh, I'll show for example. Okay, there's I cannot for the example here. So when you use something Amazon.com slash sign in or login, right? When you use the get method, the URL changes to the parameters you are sending. Whereas when you use the post method, the URL does not change. I I I show you how it works because I I have an example here. So changes the state, adds or delete data in, in the server. Uh, the other reason. Uh, for example, passwords, when you are actually putting your passwords on your, on your uh, login or something, you cannot use get method because the password can be shown on, or can be decrypted if you are uh, decoded, sorry. So if you are using it because it comes up on the URL. Mm -hmm. Example program I wrote. This is the form which has an action which call, which calls some servlet. Let's don't, don't, don't consider uh, or don't worry about what is the servlet and other things, but it just calls a program, right? We are worried about how the method get and post changes. So here I am using method post, right? And this is the comment. Uh, the, the, the second line is a comment which is which takes in a PHP, which actually calls PHP. So we are not worried about it. So the first line where the action calls a servlet with the method post and uh, file I've changed method from post to get. 
Now, uh, you know that get and post will actually call a program on the server, right? So, what are the technologies which can be used to write that program? So, the web server will be calling a program there, which or a, or a script which will actually do uh, the uh, necessary functionalities which are actually trying to get the user to be viewed, right? So, for that, they start, the technology started with CGI, that was called Common Gateway Interface, and then Servix, you need to know Java for it, JSP and PHP. I will be actually going into a daily service in PHP. So, CGI, very few people use it now. The, the market is about Servix and then C Sharp on web, right? So, ASP.NET and then PHP. As Dr. Shed, yes. Server pages. So I'll, I'll not be going into detail of that. I'll be just going into servlets and I'll be talking about servlets and PHP. Uh, I think Dr. Shed mentioned the first Facebook and Google. Especially Facebook, Facebook, Facebook was on PHP and JavaScript. So when they started, it was just this much, right? So the web server needs to call a script. That is all. And you don't care about what what programming language the script is done and all those things. So that is how CGI was done. They call it common gateway interface. They normally use Perl scripts to actually call Perl scripts and then get the data back, modify the data, and then send it back to the uh, user. So, but what they used to do is for every every request you send, they used to call. They, they used to create a process. The CGI creates a process. So that 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 brought in a lot a lot of load on web server, and uh, then they tried to use uh, that that brought in scalability issues. Then they came up with fast CGI, which didn't have many of CGI's features, but they tried to make it faster. <coughs> uh, Java answered, or uh, Java came came up with Java servlets as an answer to CGI. So CGI was done in C. Uh, so Java programming, uh, well, what does the servlet do? So you send a request, it will actually process it, it will get the data back, and Dynamic web pages. It will, it will send you. It will send. It will send a response. And uh, again, it was the Java technologies answer to CGI. So, a lot of people know Java. What are the advantages of Java? Easy. Okay. Portable. Perfect. Security. It's a security problem. Object oriented. Right. 
it's it's high level, so you can you can use a lot of objects and you can use and it is it is very popular, right? So a lot of lot of libraries are written in Java and you, you have a lot of APIs so that you can reuse it. That's one of the main advantages of servlets. Serv it's, it's efficient. You can reuse a lot of code. You can it is portable, so you can use it on any machine the same way. You can use it on whichever machine you develop. So, but the, the, the important thing for servlets is you need a servlet container. The servlet con container is similar to a web server. What do you want? I mentioned something. What what did the web server used to do? All right. So now what you need? To, what what the this the servlet containers are also web servers because you send a request to HTTP, it will actually do some processing and then send the data back. So that means all the servlet containers are web servers, but it's not vice versa because the web servers cannot be servlet. Uh, the, so what is the servlet container? Component of a web server that interacts with the servlets. So you create a Java program and that's called servlets. So I'll, I'll tell you why it's called servlets and how, how it's created. So once you create the Java program, the, there should be a component when you send a request, it should interact with the appropriate servlet which you want it to do, which, which whose functionality you want to ex extract and uh, send you back the response. So, what else does it do? It manages the life cycle of server. Mm, so, what do you mean by life cycle? So, from when it starts and it processes the data till it's in the end. Right. When, when, uh, put it better, it's, it talks about when it has to be initialized, mm -hmm. like in, in terms of when you need to call a servlet, when it has to be initialized, either it will start as soon as the servlet container comes up, or when, there, when, when you actually send a request to that particular servlet, and uh, which parameters has to be used for the servlet, all those things are taken care of care by the servlet container. Again, mapping URLs on top of the servlet. I mean, um, when you talk about when you have a program which is mapped to slash amazon.com slash hello. So hello might be a servlet. Uh, you need to map that particular URL to run that servlet. The examples of uh, servlet containers are Apache Tomcat, JBoss, IBM WebSphere. Uh, Apache Tomcat is again open source. That was previously called owned by Jakarta. And then Apache over it. That's, that's basically most of uh, uh, servlet container. The servlet container, Apache Tomcat and Apache Web Server, you know, they, they tend to use it together to make sure that uh, you don't find the difference between just uh, getting static pages to that of that page. I'll, uh, I won't be go going into detail of how they do it because it is just about changing the ports. You need to mount something, but I won't be going into detail. Apache Tomcat is not really used with Apache Web Server. And yes, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another commercial product is IBM WebSphere. It's mostly used in industry. So, how many are anyone trying? Okay. Will anyone try to do the examples which I'll be doing here? So in that case, I'll be going into detail of how to install Tomcat. Otherwise, whenever uh, we give you an assignment, you might have to do that by yourself. <coughs> how many people will install Tomcat? <clears throat> no. How many people want to install Tomcat? No. I used uh, our server guy at work said uh, XAMP, X-A-M-P-P. I will, I will talk about that. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Do you have Apache? Like, 
is done here. So if you want to say hello or hello world in the euro, <coughs> you want to say this is the euro. So that's done here. <coughs> and then HTTP methods. What are the two HTTP methods we spoke about? Yeah. Yeah. We, we were listening. Huh? We were listening. It's there. Come on. Come <laughs> on. I think I'm, I'm a little dumb asking the question that it's there. Uh, it's GoGet and GoPost. And uh, I just, we, in this particular example, we just keep seeing how it works. What, uh, what a servlet does, what Java does is, you get everything, whatever the, uh, you get everything in terms of the request and response as Java objects. The servlet container takes care of that. Okay? So, HTTP servlet request, request. Right? Servlet response, response. These are the two parameters the servlet automatically sends to this particular function once it calls. Any questions? <coughs> Any other questions? So once you have a uh, Tomcat info and you make a new project in Eclipse, do you just like make a new servlet and use your work? Or is it a little more complicated? Uh, I'm just explaining the code. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> the example where you The example where you showed that HTML file and in that you changed get method to post method. Right. So in that scenario, do we have to have do get and do post both while we write uh, the servlet, or is it just independent of this servlet? Because it's uh, you can uh, you can write do get and do post. So I mean the example where you showed, I mean it worked in both way. You changed it in HTML oh, form and it worked. Uh, so that's a good question. So let me go to the code of it. So do get. Oh yeah, it has both as well. Do post. Okay. Right. So we need I'm to write both. We need to take as right. So if you want to work, if you want that particular URL uh -huh. to work for both, mm -hmm. get and post. Do both the for me. Uh, normally this is very bad programming practice because uh, I have actually copy pasted the code. In time, you should create a new function and just call the function to do get and do post if you want to make it work on both of these things. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. So, what this does is it has th this part when you call this particular URL through the Tomcat container, or servlet container, it will call it will call this class, hello world, which extends HTTP servlet. HTTP servlet is parent class which you have to extend to write the servlet. So this gets in all these things, request response and other functions. You know, you're overriding do get and you'll be overriding do post. That will have few more functions, which is very much related to servlets. So, in this particular function, what I'm doing is this printing a word, plain text. It will print on console. Yes. Yeah. No, I am sending the response. There is a get writer for response. I'm using that get writer, and I am sending that. I am sending just hello world as a response, plain text, to the browser. So don't you need to put up that thing in HTML? Next. That would be my next. <laughs> For now, it's just plain text. You know, it's a very basic example on how to call do get and what will be the output. If it doesn't work, 
Fuck out of me. Just give me a sign. Concepts, how many of you know object oriented design concepts? You have a class car, the class Benz and BMW. Why should these actually implement or extend this particular class? That means this is the parent class, these two are the child classes. So this has something, uh, this has a function called accelerate, which is overridden by how by Benz based on its and other parameters and which is overridden by BMW. And uh, and if Corolla does not have an actual rate, it will just be calling the car actually. Okay? That means I have a basic function which has to be overridden. So that is what it will do. That means do get is already a part of HTTP servlet and I'm overriding it to do this particular function. That's done. And uh, now Sriyans, your question on how to generate HTML. Can you use classes and servers in Java so your Java? Yeah. That uh, that is the main that is one of the main advantages of using servlets. You can use other classes, libraries, uh, any jars. You can do PHP now too. In PHP five, you can use classes. Right. Oh, you are talking about object-oriented uh, yeah. design. Yes, PHP five has it, but before that, it did have. I'm talking about uh, whether you can use other libraries in terms of 
strange ally is more useful or served it. So, so now you have a plain <coughs> HTML. How do you generate an HTML to serve it? The same thing, I have a do get and I just type, I just send the content type as text slash HTML. The default <coughs> content type is text slash plain. If you look at HTTP, there are a list of content types. You can send uh, plain text, you can send HTML, you can send JSON. I think you guys know XML, right? You can send XML, JSON. So how many how many know JSON? One person. XML. Okay. So these are all the content types you can send. There are a bigger list you can go to. Okay, but here we will be sending this text slash HTML and this is the HTML that we send. Right. Don't worry about what it is. You know, just we need to make sure that it coordinates. Make the form and then you have to 
servlet which is being uh, called by the uh, by the servlet container when you actually request and uh, what am I submitting is a variable called max which has the value 25 as default but we can actually change the value so now if I go to this 45 right and when I hit this that particular value is sent to the servlet. The servlet has a do get. How do okay? Another question. How do we how do we get to know that this is sending a get request? Okay. So we get to know because the URL has the value of the parameters which we are sending and this collects it and it prints. So head, title, in the, in the body we have all the numbers printed. I guess the, the disconnect I think you might have is that the server that is actually generating the HTML for this page, it's not a separate page because I think that's how you started. You were editing an HTML page and was it sending it to the servlet or was the servlet actually generating that page and entering prime number and it's got all the HTML code? It is generating the whole HTML page and again, what does the web server do? Page or server. Complete page, right? Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing some processing and sending to the page again. It's the same. It, same it does what web server does, but it is doing some processing. I mean, it's like my it, it's like the, the very beginning is, is it a static page sending to a servlet or is it entirely the servlet that's doing it? It is, the, it is entirely the servlet which is doing it. About static pages and just manipulating some data, Alan will be taking care of that. <coughs> Quite tight program. That's a pretty good question. You know. In terms of when you're talking about the Facebook notifications which I spoke about, I had one of the slides for it. I think I'll talk about it here the Facebook notifications, only the notifications are changing, but the rest of the page is the same. So uh, there should be some connect between the client and the server, you know, saying that, okay, make sure that all this page is same and just change only these things, right? So uh, Alan will take care of that. I will. Yes. you change that max to 60 in the URL and hit enter, will that yeah. It, yeah, it, it does. Work too. Any more questions? How high number you get to break that? Since I've, I've used an integer, it's the integer limited now. Okay. I showed you handling forms. 
Yes. How many yes, how many no? I don't know if you mean by So, okay, let me explain what is handling for. I have entered the data, it goes to the servlet, it processes, <coughs> and it sends the data back. How many of you say that I have explained handling forms? I I agree most of them have not <laughs> <laughs> Now, coming back to the life cycle, yeah, <coughs> it, I asked what is the life cycle, and she had told that it starts with, you know, when the servlet has to be initialized until it's dead. So, there is a function called init. Also override another function called init when the servlet is first initialized. That is when all the data in init is called once. You know? If you want to initialize the initialize the variable to be once and the variable is used by the rest of the servlet over time, you can do that in the init function. It's it's like a constructor, right? So you use in it where you can initialize a lot of uh, initialize whatever the servlet needs over time and which does not change. Service. Service is all these HTTP get, post, and the rest of the HTTP functions like port, delete. So the service is the function which shouldn't be overloaded, uh, override, overridden. So that is uh, that is there in the HTTP servlet class that is there in this class and that should not be overridden because that handles where the function has to be transferred. Either it has to be transferred to do get or do post. So this this dispatches the code to either do get or do post which are overriding. Again, I'm talking about the car and the rest of the cars which is actually making sure what has to be overridden and what, ha what should not. Do get to post the blah. You can you can actually override those functions and destroy is called at the uh, the server container will decide when to call destroy, which actually ends the life of the server, so particular server. Mm -hmm. wants to know what is PHP. Okay, this has taken Who knows what PHP <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who knows what PHP? That, that, that's a pretty good okay, go. Cool. So now I've spoken about how servlet lifecycle works and what all servlet <coughs> needs, but uh, if you want to send some parameter to a servlet or send some data to servlet, not through HTTP, but through your own code, you can do that using web.xml. So uh, Tomcat is, in, is at version 7. You can, there are a lot of properties. I'll, be, I'll just be explaining. I'll, there are a lot of properties of servlet containers, but I'll just be explaining few which are important for us to know, right? So one of which, which I spoke about was URL mapping, right? So the, this at web servlet came up only in Tomcat 7. So annotation of where, where the servlet has to be mapped. But previously, it used to be like this. You know, servlet, it, it has to be in a web.xml file inside the servlet which you are writing inside the dynamic project which you are actually creating on Eclipse. Uh, again, creating a dynamic project and other things I'll be actually putting out a file for you so that this is much more clear when you are trying to work on it. And this will be only clear if you work on it. So until then, if you are just trying to grasp it through this lecture, no. <laughs> 
Yeah, Eclipse <laughs> open, and then open a browser. Oh, we didn't have Eclipse, but I stored it. So here is where you can map. So that means whenever you, uh, whenever you get a URL saying test two, please map that to test server. This, would, uh, this is an XML file which will be taken care of the server container for the particular project which you are using. And now, if you want to send some parameters to the server while it is initializing or while you want to work on, you can send those parameters like this, you know, with server and parameter name with parameter value. So if you just put this up, you can let me Get servlet config, the configuration which we are sending in XML, get init parameter. So <coughs> If you are putting a parameter name, this is the init parameter. If you are putting a parameter name, parameter 1, just put the XML. And I'm not going to run it because it won't work because I haven't created the web.xml, but I'm just showing you how you can actually get the parameter. Anyone didn't understand? Okay. Anyone didn't understand this? Good. So you have web.xml which you need to create in the project which you are creating to work on servlets. And in that web.xml, you can actually mention the parameters which you want to send. For example, parameter one will have for example, uh, let us consider uh, you are actually uh, uh, let us consider some default value in terms of when you are uh, when you are uh, uh, when you are actually calculating the half of the value which you want to send, uh, like divide by two. So you can send a parameter value saying two, so that well, the, value, the number which you send through the web browser will be divided by two. Something like that, you know? You have default values in terms of, uh, if, you, if you are actually logging into Amazon, and the Amazon has some default values saying that, okay, this person is, uh, this person is actually logging in or signing into Amazon Prime or something like that. You can actually put up those values here. And the also it just allows you to pick it whatever values being stored in there. Right. Okay. So you can actually pick the values being stored in web.xml for that appropriate server which you have mentioned. So how it can be actually picked up is get server config dot get in a parameter. So and you give the parameter name, that will be stored in this particular area. Anyway, this is not that necessary, but <laughs> you guys can go through it later. We won't be providing any, probably we won't be providing any clear assignments which, is, which might use your project. Okay. Small mention of content types again. This content type can be anything. 
I'm mentioning this because this will be helpful for your projects or assignments. You can change the content type, you can create the appropriate data and send it back to me. So send it back to the client. And the client can use the data. But at this point of time, we are creating HTML because we are assuming that the client is a web browser. So if the client is another machine which wants to wants to process some data, for example, if I'm if I'm asking the employees' names of Rightscape, and Rightscape has a URL and a servlet which just takes it from the database and provides you the name. I don't want that to be in HTML. I just want that to be XML. Then that employee, employee name, employee name, etc. And I just want to process those and put it in another database. For that, you can actually create a service which sends an XML. Or for now, we are just talking about XML. <coughs> so you guys have to look at how XML or JSON can be passed. We have another 10 minutes and I have to cover PHP. So I will just go through whatever I have done in Java servlets, how you can do that in PHP. Okay? And PHP can be uh, <coughs> extended, like in terms of, it's again similar to Java, where you can get more libraries. PHP is open source, so people write a lot of libraries. So you can take in more libraries and use those functionalities before you create a web page. Uh, a little bit history of, uh, about PHP. Uh, so, I don't know his name, but how it started was uh, he wanted to create a personalized home page and he looked into some languages and he thought, look at these things are not fine. I want to create my own, own personalized home page. So, created PHP. PHP was actually the abbreviation was personalized home page. And then uh, that, was, that became popular and people started using it. It was never hypertext preprocessor. Uh, so let's, you need to write most of HTML as strings and then send it in Java. But PHP is something which you, have, which you can, it's, it's a scripting language, it is dynamically typed. How many of you know what is dynamic data? Okay. Uh, dynamic data type is, uh, that means the variables do not need data types to be mentioned in terms of, uh, it dynamically at runtime type decides what is the uh, type of the So, it's a scripting language where you can embed PHP in HTML. So, let me go, go for the examples. It's really useful, especially if you have something like that. If you want every page, you can embed like a half bar if you're on Twitter. Right. It's how I got started with it. It's like, because I mean, doing JavaScript, you're doing something, copying the page and coding, so you're all over the world. It's like, just grab the half bar and do it. Right. Yeah. So, it's pretty easy. Yeah. 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 There is a difference between Tomcat, that is the servlet container I spoke about, and Apache the web server. Apache has very good uh, support for PHP. So you can directly put up this page in terms of .php, you can write it. So PHP in this, this is actually the delimiter for PHP. These are all the delimiters which you can use for an example. This is the delimiter I am using, and you can echo hello world. So the, this is the similar kind of uh, <coughs> which I did for hello world in servlet, where I had to send uh, the data back to the client once it is requested from the servlet container. But here Apache will do this directly. What in PHP what it does is when there's a request for a PHP page, so the Apache what Apache actually executes all the code inside these two inside this delimiter, uh, 
what this does is it just echoes hello world. That means just print hello world in this particular page. I'll show you an example which will be much clearer for all of you. HTML page, but you are embedding some PHP components for calculations. The next example I will be showing you guys will be the same even numbers. You send a number and I'll print out all the even numbers after that. That is done in PHP. Uh, ask me if you have any doubts. So there is head, etc, etc, et and I have a maximum, and what's about this? Where is the format? Get in post in PHP. What we did in Java, request dot get parameter, right? So Java had everything bundled. In the do get method, we had request dot get parameter, Request dot get map get parameter in do post. The service decides whether it's a get request or post request, <coughs> and I use I use I use the request which is with Java bundles or the server container bundles or the request parameters of that, and I pick it up uh, by mentioning the name of the parameter. Similarly, what we do in PHP is this. Get and max. So, dollar name for all the, if you are using a post function from the HTML, you use underscore post and in particular uh, the name of the variable you are sending. And for <coughs> get underscore get and in particular name of the variable you are sending. So, in this, we are actually using get, get method on the other side, and we are sending max parameter, similar to whatever we did in Java Cerebrics. And uh, for until maximum, we actually print every other number. Okay, I think I'm talking a lot, so what should I do now? I have a question about that. Though. Yes. Well, um, you said you're getting the variable max. Where was the format? What do you mean? Go back to your event page. Oh, that was point. my question. What should I do now? Oh, you have to make form. Or type it if you The form is already uh, ready, right? Okay. I just need to manipulate that form. Okay, go on. So you need to change which one reference to your server. Absolutely. I was referencing, referencing to a server. Yeah. I'm waiting to reference to a PSP page. Okay. 
Is that all? I have no idea. <laughs> you were answering until now. I thought <laughs> if this doesn't work, you would be held responsible for it. <laughs> So that page shown the PHP code is not there and what it generates oh, to a new source.